Coming up on this episode of The Bite, we are getting into the latest updates on the 2018 basketball season. Also, with Christmas right around the corner, we are beginning to get the school into the holiday spirit with some festive in the halls. Stay tuned for an exciting episode. I'm Alex Sepka. And I'm Hannah Whiteford, and this is The Bite. With the new sports season comes new teams and new coaches. The varsity boys basketball team has got a new coach this year and reporter Tad Lackey got the inside scoop on that. He talked to coach Tim Stone about his expectations for this season and his hopes to improve this team this season and more. As winter sports begin, the boys varsity basketball team is hoping to put together a strong starting lineup considering that most of the seniors that contributed to most of the points last year are now graduated. I talked to the boys varsity basketball coach, Coach Stone, to see what he has in mind for this year. Uh, the expectations for uh, this season is hopefully we get the kids enjoying basketball again, playing basketball the correct way. Uh, we have a very young and experienced team. We have two freshmen, a sophomore on the team, no returning starters. So we just look to get better uh, game by game and uh, just keep improving. <laughs> the things I like to uh, improve on during the season is just coming in and being ready and prepared to practice, practice the right way, and then work together as a team, and uh, just be respectful on and off the court. My advice for younger players is uh, get out there, handle the ball, left-handed, right-handed. Make sure you're practicing uh, the correct way. We have too many players practicing the wrong way, then we have to go and correct them. Uh, but the biggest thing is ball handling and correct shooting form. Uh, the fundamentals of basketball is what we need to work on. And a good luck to this year's boys varsity basketball. Hope you guys have a great season. I'm Ted Lackey. See you guys later. With Christmas right around the corner and festive music blaring since before Thanksgiving, I wanted to put Alden students to the test to see how well they know the classic song, The 12 Days of Christmas. Let's see how they did. I'm Hannah Whiteford from Wax News. With Christmas right around the corner, I decided to get out into the halls and see how well students know the classic 12 days of Christmas. What did my true love give to me on the first day of Christmas? A partridge in a pear tree. A partridge in a pear tree. A geese. A partridge in a pear tree. A partridge in a pear tree. And the second day of Christmas. Uh, two turtle doves? I don't remember. A diamond ring. The third day of Christmas. I don't know. <laughs> Three turtle doves. What did my true love give to me on the fourth day of Christmas? Four calling birds. What did my true love give to me on the fifth day of Christmas? Uh, five sticks. What was on the five turtle? I don't know. Golden ring. On the sixth day of Christmas. Six geese a laying. Yep. Um, that's a great question. I really don't know. In the ninth day of Christmas. Day of Christmas, you look at me. Nine geese a laying. On the tenth day of Christmas. Maids a milking. The Lord's a leaping. On the tenth day of Christmas. Five gold <laughs> rings. <laughs> ten. Oh is it like ladies dancing or something? Ten doves. A, um. Drummers. Ten, drum. oh! No. What? Yes. It's, no. There you are. Maids a milking. Okay. No. Ten. ten swans a swimming. No. no. Ten. Ten. <laughs> maids a. <laughs> Lords a leaping. And the eleventh day of Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Eleven doves? Swans is swimming! Drummer's drumming. What did my true love give to me on the 12th day of Christmas? 
up um, 12 pipers piping. Um, a partridge in a pear tree. 12 drummers drumming. That's easy. I could sing that song in my sleep. Oh, really? What did your true love give to you on the ninth day of Christmas? <laughs> um, nine dancing geese. And with that, we'll be right back. Uh, You're scrolling through your newsfeed, maybe watching someone's story, and something jumps out and makes you feel uncomfortable. So you just keep scrolling. You think it's probably nothing. But can you be sure? Report violent or suspicious activity to your school resource officer or school personnel immediately. You can report this activity in person or anonymously online at aldenschools.org slash tips. If you see something, say something. And we're back. We have lots of new and exciting information coming your way, including news about the girls' basketball tournament and even more Christmas content. Well, let's hop to it. On November 30th and December 1st, Alden High School hosted their very own girls basketball tournament. Luke Drew covered the weekend tournament and got all the information including the results and highlights. I'm Luke Drew from WAX News. On November 30th and December 1st, Alden High School held their very own Alden State Bank tip-off tournament. The JV and Varsity girls first game was against Pembroke. Unfortunately, the JV lost and Varsity also lost with a score of 47 to 33. Even though it was a tough loss, a lot of effort was shown by the Lady Bulldogs. The JV is led by captains Megan Weiford and Maddie Abbott. Both leaders are key factors to the team. On the second day, on December 1st, JV and Varsity both played Akron for their last game of the tournament. As you can see, here is Ellie Pesky making a free throw. The JV girls won with a close score of 36-33. to The Varsity girls, and unfortunately, lost with a score of 29-53. to here is Grace Pesinski, a starter on the varsity basketball team, making a free throw. As Pembroke went on to win the tournament, the Lady Bulldogs showed a lot of effort on the court. I'm Luke Chu from Wax News. Every family has a traditional holiday recipe. Sometimes these recipes are so out of the ordinary, you just can't help but question how it all came to be. Reporter Ashton Wilson went around to some of Alden's teachers to hear what their favorite traditional holiday recipes were. With the holiday season just around the corner, it is time to dust off the old family recipes and see what people literally bring to the table. The teachers also have family recipes that they use on Christmas. I spoke with some of the teachers to see what they were and how they originated. Christmas Eve, we all gather around uh, my family and we have a big dinner. We uh, normally do surf and turf. My sister-in-law normally overcooks the uh, roast, but it's a family tradition that we do every year. A little lobster, a little prime rib, we all get together and uh, we open one gift that evening. It's a special moment for us all. This year will be even a little bit more special. Um, got my nephews coming up from out of town and we're gonna have a great time. Um, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Hi, so every year for Christmas, my family and I get together and we make Gucci Dottis. Gucci Dottis are an Italian uh, fig cookie that you make um, and you have to roll out the dough and make this fig filling. And every year we get together and do this just about the week before Christmas. Um, it's just a family tradition that we've done for quite a few years and we enjoy it. And my dad loves fig cookies, Those, so that's why we do it. So on Christmas morning, we all gather at my mother's house and we do a big family brunch where we do cinnamon rolls or coffee cake so everything's homemade and we just my father's always cutting up the hash browns and every year I have a picture of him sitting at the table cutting the potatoes and for dinner we just get together and do a big smorgasbord of Italian food so pasta or ham or lasagna it's delicious so um, on Christmas we have that at my, my parents house and it's kind of like Thanksgiving, except lots of cookies, lots of cookies. My favorite or a tradition at my house is uh, we eat a lot of pasta, uh, whether it's um, pasta with sauce, macaroni and cheese, butter noodles. My family eats a lot of pasta, so that's kind of probably a tradition at my house. first semester of the school year wrapping up, I walked through the halls of the high school asking seniors how they felt about seven more months of school. Let's see if the senioritis has taken over yet.
With the first semester of the school year wrapping up, I decided to ask some students and teachers how they felt about senioritis kicking in. Do you have senioritis? I don't know. I just want to go home and play Fortnite. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. Katie, do you have senioritis? So I don't really believe in senioritis, I think. Actually, I have osteoarthritis. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have senioritis? Uh. Do you have senioritis? No, nah, man. I thought you were a senior. Fail second grade. Uh, I have a lot of itises. Clearly, this year's seniors have a big problem with senioritis. This is Alex Upgo signing off for Wax News. Wait, senioritis is something that happens during senior year? Yeah, what did you think it was? Well, it's been happening to me since freshman year. Maybe that's why you can't remember the 12 days of Christmas. Well, that would make sense. Well, thanks so much for joining us on this episode of The Bite. To stay up to date with the latest news, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat by searching WACS News and visit our website at wacs.aldenschools.org. Signing off from Wax News, I'm Alex Epka. And I'm Hannah Whiteford. See you next time.